Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to try and do all this in one take because uh, one, I don't have a lot of time and two, I don't have any editing software. So I'm not going to try to mess with it. Let's just uh, try to do it right the first time. So uh, to follow up on my last video of my custom SIG uh, P320 uh, with the Wilson Combat Grip Frame as you can see here. Uh, for those of you that didn't see that video, I recommend going back and watching it. It's actually not that bad. Um, if I do say so myself, I've got some pretty good feedback. Uh, I think that I sound stupid, but don't most of us when we hear our voices played back. So anyway, uh, long story short, I said that I would do a video to a couple people about the holster that I got. And the reason why I want to do this is because there's a couple things about this gun that are a little bit different that make... Uh, some people are a little bit worried about holster fitment if they uh, do certain upgrades. And I just want to assure them and kind of show them that what I chose to do, it worked just fine. So um, real quick rundown of what we got on the table. I'm also kind of an EDC guy, um, just an enthusiast. I don't collect a lot of EDC stuff. Um, I do have a decent job in logistics, but, you know, I'm not a you know, a multi-millionaire by any means, so kind of do with what I got, so, but anyway, kind of some nicer stuff, um, this is actually a tactile turn, uh, this is one of their bolt actions with a, uh, titanium anno finish on the little thing there, pull it down, and then when you flick it back, it just pops back into place, yeah, kind of cool. It's uh, finished in copper, and like I said, it's got a titanium uh, anodized button. Pretty cool. Um, I got a uh, I3T uh, from Olight. Uh, just takes a little AAA battery, and uh, this is in brass, and it's great for every uh, everyday carry, and it's uh, getting a nice patina to it. And uh, that's kind of why I'm carrying the copper and the brass is because uh, I like the look of patina, and I think over time these will... Uh, Kind of look pretty cool, and uh, I don't prefer one more than the other as far as patina goes, so I wanted both. Um, next, uh, for knife guys, this will actually be uh, pretty easy. You already know what this is. Um, they're relatively popular. Not the hardest thing to get your hands on, but also not the easiest because they're not always in stock. So this is a Chris Reeves Umnumzon. Um, this is about a $450 to $500 knife, depending on where you get it. I went with the Tonto version, and uh, I do baby this thing. It's got a little bit of smudging on it from where I was handling it earlier, but it's very clean. Uh, still has the factory edge on it. Uh, overall, very, very nice knife. It's uh, kind of sick, and uh, it is a frame lock knife, and it's uh, full titanium, and this is the version that has the S45 uh, VN blade steel. So uh, the reason why I went with such an expensive knife is one, because I am an enthusiast, but two, uh, I saw this thing for the first time and I actually saw it with the harpoon blade, which I like the look of the harpoon blade better, but I don't think that I would use it as much as the Tonto blade. So I decided to go with the Tonto blade because that's what I found available at the time. And uh, I absolutely love it. I use it a little bit and uh, some people might freak out over the fact that I'm using a $500 knife, but uh, I'm kind of one of those guys, if I'm going to buy a $500 knife, I'm going to use a $500 knife. So I usually that uh, use that in con uh, conjunction with a couple of spider codes that I carry um, a smock that has been upgraded with skiff bearings that has M4 steel. It's a blade HQ exclusive which I don't have here to show, and then a couple other Spydercos that I run through. Uh, and then the last one is a uh, Vice Hardware Full Titanium. I think this is the their uh, F22 with the uh, titanium clip, and I believe that the whole package is titanium. It's got that little bottle opener with the hex pattern on there. And I think this was uh, 129 150 bucks, something like that with shipping. Uh, really cool wallet, absolutely love it. Highly recommend it to anyone. If anyone has any questions, you can ask them in the comments below, and I will uh, try to answer them as I can. Um, and uh, moving on. So what you're here for, so the Legacy Firearms Holster. So this one in particular, this is the Light Bearing Kronos. It is an in the waistband holster. Um, I say that specifically and clearly because they have a ton of different models on their website and you can't always tell 
which one you're looking at just by seeing it in a video. So I want to be clear again, this is the light bearing Kronos. And uh, for those of you, because I do have this in the holster, this is my carry gun. Uh, it is not cleared, so let's do that real quick. Mag out. Round unchambered. Let's lock the slide back there. That way you guys can see. You can see no brass end in there. All good to go. So, yeah. And again, just showing off my little beauty here. I got my TLR uh, 7A from Streamlight. My uh, Wilson Combat Carry 2 grip frame. Uh, I have uh, some of the uh, accessories, and it's killing me, I never remember the name of the uh, company that these accessories are from, but I did mention it in my previous video, so that's just more motivation to go back and watch the previous video. And if I remember it while I'm doing this one, I will let you know. But anyway, so I have the takedown lever, which as you can see, it's kind of honking. It kind of stands off of the gun quite a bit. And that's what most people are kind of worried about with this grip frame as to whether that's going to fit or not. So, uh, two things about the holster. And I'm going to hold the gun while I actually talk about this. So, um, specifically, you're going to want something that fits this grip frame. And again, this is the Wilson Combat Carry 2. Um, and you are going to want specifically a holster that will fit this one because the fitment is a little bit different than a standard P320 from Six Hour. Uh, the other thing too is, and I this might be something that works with regular SIG holsters uh, with the regular frames, but as far as I know for the Wilson Combats, um, it works just fine with this takedown lever. And this is the one that I see most common that people upgrade to is this one. Uh, there is another one that's kind of scooped um, that... Sig Sauer, I believe, even sells themselves. Uh, it is, in my opinion, looks cooler. I think this one is a little bit more functional, in my opinion, um, for both taking down the gun, but as well as getting a good purchase on there, because the other one, you kind of have to have your hand perfectly aligned with it in order for it to fit comfortably. Otherwise, you're riding up on one side or the other of the actual thing. How that works is you get your finger in here, and it just goes right on there and then you get a little bit of a gas pedal. And while you're shooting, no, you don't have a risk of actuating that, but you can kind of see how easy that is for me to actuate it, which is why I love this, because it makes it easier to actually maintain the gun. Um, so that's a benefit. Um, obviously, Apex trigger, just for those who are going to ask, because I know some people still ask. So anyway, pretty sick, pretty cool. Love this gun. So moving on. Is that off, that off to the side? Um, so, oh real quick because I did have somebody ask the other day and uh, I told them that I would put it in the video. Um, they want to know how big a 357 SIG is in comparison to some other caliber rounds. So I don't have any 9mm. I used to own 9mm but I don't have any right now. Uh, I do have a 45 though which is what this is. Pretty large round. And then along with this I also have my 357 SIG which is what I actually goes in that carry gun in my uh, P320. So as you can see, they're pretty close to the same size. This is actually comparable to a 40 caliber round, the 40 Smith & Wesson. The difference is that the bullet that's in the cartridge is a little bit smaller. As you can see, it's neck down, whereas a 40 caliber is actually a straight wall all the way up. There is no necking on here. Uh, that's really what the difference is on these two. So again, it's just a little bit smaller than the 45 caliber. Uh, and then as far as uh, another common round, uh, 380, which is arguably kind of the smallest of the carry calibers that you'd want to go to. Uh, so this is a 380 ACP and uh, it's pretty tiny. And uh, when you put the two next to each other, I know it's kind of kind of hard to see at the angle that I'm doing this at, but let's get it in here. There you go. There's a pretty good comparison. So at the bullets themselves, they're actually about the same height as far as how far up they stick off of the cartridge, but then the actual cartridges, you can see exactly how much smaller the 380 is compared to the other one. So, but anyway, keep having to hit my computer. It's not plugged in, so it likes to time out after a couple minutes. So anyway, that's what it is. Uh, 357 SIG is comparable to a 40 caliber. Um, it is supposed to have a little less recoil, a little more than a 9mm, uh, but it 
typically has the same penetrating power as a nine mil compare, uh, rather than to compare to a 40 cal that, um, I believe if, uh, my memory is serving me correctly, I believe the 40 cal has less penetration because it's a larger round, uh, even though it may be moving slightly slower than a nine mil, uh, but relatively close to the same. So anyway, getting off topic. Uh, that's your comparison for whoever asked, and uh, hope that helps. If you have any other questions, again, leave them in the comments below. Um, and yes, I do read my comments down there. If you uh, look at the last video that I did on my SIG P320, uh, I actually have answered just about every comment that's in there. Um, I am not a YouTuber. I uh, make videos because I enjoy to. Uh, and I want to make them for those who actually do have questions, especially those that uh, I don't uh, companies that uh, don't get enough uh, praise for the work they do. The reason why I made my last one was not just because of what I did, because a lot of people wanted to know that I knew, but also because Hexagon Precision doesn't get enough uh, of the glory for how awesome their shop is uh, in Texas, who actually did the uh, milling on the slide chamfers on this. And dude, they're just, they're so grippy, even though they're so small as far as texturing goes, that it's insane. I absolutely love it. I couldn't have asked for anything better. Um, and I got exactly what uh, their package asked for. This actually is a package that you can order. And I covered that in the last video, so I won't go over it again. But it's amazing, and I highly recommend it. Um, now, as far as the holster goes. So again, this holster is from Legacy Firearms. This is the Light Baron Cronus in waistband. And uh, I will actually show you the computer here in a minute to show you exactly uh, what the options are that I chose for this holster. Um, as well as with that, I'll show you uh, kind of what the price is. And I will have a link in my description to the uh, web URL for this particular holster. Uh, that way, if you want to set your gun up exactly like this one is set up, because you really like this, uh, this holster will work perfectly for it. And uh, it's actually cut on here. You can see on the top, it's actually cut for Holosun optics, but they have like an option for, I think, uh, eight or nine different optics, maybe even more than that. So they, they can cut it pretty much however you want. Uh, they obviously have uh, multiple options for lights that you can get. Um, have those done in. They have multiple options for the wings. I think they just have two options or no wing at all. Uh, and then on the back, this is actually called a concealment wedge. Uh, I know some other companies do it. Um, I've never owned a holster by another company that did this. And uh, the other holsters that I have owned, a couple of popular companies, including uh, Alien Gear, uh, didn't even offer one when I bought a uh, holster from them at the time. So, yeah, kind of kind of cool. And, yes, it does work. It works great. Uh, I am about a 270-pound heavy set man. Uh, I'm only about 5'11". So, uh, all that being said... It's not real hard for me to kill, uh, conceal things, but if I don't get my holster in the right place uh, without this wedge, it actually does print a little bit more, which I'm not too worried about printing when I'm concealed carrying. I'm concealed carrying to have it concealed, but I'm also carrying for the exact reason that I don't really care if people know that I'm carrying. It's for my own protection and for that of my friends and family, and I, I really don't care what people think. Uh, if someone wants to have come up and have a general conversation with me about it, love to, you know, enlighten them because obviously if they're coming up to have a conversation and it's negative, it's probably because they don't know what they're talking about. So anyway, getting back into it. So we got a clip right here. Uh, it's just a standard clip. Uh, it doesn't even have a logo on here for anything. Um, this is for the uh, 1.5 inch. You can kind of see that on there. And these are made in the USA. Uh, and as far as this wing goes, I was trying to figure out on their website what this wing was called. I couldn't remember whether this one was their, give me one second here. I'm actually going to scroll down on the page that I got up. Just verify. Oh yeah. So yeah. So I wasn't sure if this was their wing that was on there that said it's the RCS belt claw. Uh, or if it was the uh, mod wing. I do believe that this is the mod wing, but I know that on the website, they actually have something that says which one is which. So just go on there and you know do your due diligence. Make sure that uh, you get what you want, what's gonna fit you best. Because ultimately, you're gonna be the only one that really knows. So 
Um, this particular pattern that I did, this is actually in a matte finish of a uh, multicam. And it's carbon fiber multicam, which I actually didn't know that was a thing until I found it on this website. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, it is a little bit weird to me. I do still like it. Um, it's a little bit polarizing though, and that's kind of what I was going for. So I actually uh, tried to go full out. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't customize the color of the wing or the clip. Otherwise, those would be different colors. But I did do an uh, anodized orange finish on the uh, rings that go on here. And that's that's kind of awesome to me. I, I kind of love that look. So anyway, um, as far as the specs go, so obviously cut for a Halston optic. It's also cut on the end here so that it will fit a threaded barrel. It also has a raise at the top there that you can see right here. And this is for uh, suppressor height sights. So obviously if you have a threaded barrel, you might wanna have a suppressor on the end of it, i.e. you need suppressor height sights to be able to see over the top. Not to mention because I'm running a red dot up here. Obviously you can see on there, running a red dot. Um, if you're not running suppressor height sights, as you can kind of see here, as I, and not running suppressor height sights right now, which I need to change that. Um, you cannot see really that front, that front sight over the optic. It kind of just blends in. Uh, like this is right at the edge of the bottom of the optic. So it doesn't really help. But what is beneficial is because this is a concealed carry and uh, pretty much anything that I'm going to be shooting at is going to be within about 7 yards or 21 feet. I'm not sincerely worried about needing to get a perfect sight picture because at that, at that range, it's basically point shoot. You know, obviously you want to know what you're pointed at, but... That's why we practice, that's why we train, and that's why we make sure that everything is sighted in beforehand in case you do manage to get your sight picture be, before you have to pull the trigger. Otherwise, you end your own, you know, somebody ends your life for you. So, anyway, uh, getting back to the gun, uh, less morbid things. Uh, the gun, uh, already went over everything for it. Uh, but specifically what we were covering was this piece here that people had questions on, whether it fits. So that one here is actually going to go in through this side right here. goes up through here, and you can kind of see it right here. There's a little bit of a line right here. Uh, it would go in right through this spot here, and there's no dragging. You can kind of see through there. There's no dragging on this at all. So for those who are wondering if... Um, this takedown lever will catch on the holster, keep it from indexing, uh, keep it from being able to go in. At least on this model, if you get it cut for this uh, specific lower on here, this specific frame, uh, it will not catch on this holster. So you don't have to worry about that with these. I don't know if all of their models are going to be like that. So just take it for a grain of salt if you do have any questions and you don't because their their holsters do run upwards of you know 130 150 60 dollars um you do uh it, it they're, they're they're expensive so you may even want to call and just get clarification to make sure if you're a little bit weary if you don't mind spending you know an extra 100 dollars if it doesn't fit or if you don't mind even taking down the takedown lever and just putting something else on it if you like your holster enough then do that Either way, your money, do what you want. Um, but if you go with this frame and you go with this takedown lever, at least with this Kronos holster, you won't have to worry about it. So anyway, that's pretty much what I had for you, at least on the holster itself. Um, I actually did buy one more holster and I'm going to move the camera here. We're uh, out in the garage and it's pretty dang cold out here right now. So I'm going to try and be a little bit quicker. So... So let's see here. And uh, yes, I'm a student. So yes, I have Amazon on here. Uh, let's see, Amazon books that is. So, And when I say a student, I'm not saying that uh, I'm real young. I'm uh, going to be 30 in March. Uh, I just went back to school for criminal justice. So anyway, getting a site. So this is a legacy firearm site. This is the Light Baron Kronos in waistband. You can see it's $165.99. So far I have on here how my build is set up. Uh, this obviously isn't the picture of my build because you just saw it, but uh, these are the specifications on the side here. So I have my SIG P320, WCP P, uh, 
320 carry two there is a carry one there is a carry two my specific uh, grip frame is the second generation from Wilson combat and I knew that buying it so I did do the carry two option so second from that uh, obviously uh, weapon light I have the streamlight TLR 7a I'll actually click on this here and give you kind of what they have for options so as far as options go you can kind of see they have all the O lights they have all the sigs they have stream lights, they have some surefires, so there's uh, no lack of options there for those. Um, as far as color goes, obviously you have all of these freaking colors that are in here. All of these colors. There's just tons of them, tons of finishes, and I mean, they're not for much more. I mean, the more expensive ones are, you know, like 20 bucks extra, but I mean, 20 bucks is nothing when you're talking about a holster that you're going to carry a lot and wear a lot and you want it to be exactly what you want it to be. So anyway, as you've seen on mine, I went with the, uh, the multicam carbon fiber. Um, if you actually like this one here that I'm pointing at, so that one, that's actually the first one that I bought. It's not a light bearing. This one shows light bearing. The one that I bought isn't the light bearing Kronos, but it is the Kronos. Um, same clip, same wing, everything on here. It's for the exact same gun. It literally just doesn't have uh, light bearing on it. So that being said, I also love this holster, but I wanted one that I could hold my light on, which is thus why I got the other one. Um, mine is looks exactly like this. The only difference is my O-rings are uh, silver because I wanted it to be low profile, uh, but it actually is the same clear that you have on here. And um, cause it's kind of hard to figure that out in here, which one it is. It's actually called ghost and it's completely clear. So save you a little bit of time on trying to do your research on that. If you want the clear, which is cool, it's called ghost. It is the ghost pattern and yes, it is on there. So just look for it. Um, now moving on from that again, anodized orange uh, for my finish washers my edge is a matte finish um, they, they do give you a gloss finish uh, option but I was not that interested in gloss finish because yeah I was going for polarizing but I, I'm still not a big fan of gloss finish so anyway right hand draw obviously uh, I just went with the common mid size sweat guard on there they do have a high and they do have no sweat guard options uh plastic clip you actually have two so you can get the dcc metal monoblock uh gear clip which i did not want i did not want uh metal on my belt uh kind of tearing it to pieces because i do wear leather belts and i don't wear gun leather belts that are a little bit stiffer i just wear regular leather belts so didn't want that option so i just went with the regular option the plastic clip works perfectly fine for me uh obviously 1.5 regular belt um and then like i said i think the one that i have on mine is the mod wing but they actually do have the rsc belt claw which is a little bit different let me see if i can actually find another picture here see if they have one that actually has the rsc on it Oh man, scrolling through, scrolling through. Uh, we might be there. It is okay. So that is the RSC, I believe. And again, double check, make sure that uh, that actually is what it is and everything. Um, I believe on my ghost one, I actually went with the R RCS. Yes, did I say that right? RCS, not RSC. Uh, da -da -da -da. There it is. RCS. Yes. So, uh, yes, I actually, so on my ghost one, I actually did, uh, do the RCS and, uh, it works just as well. So you're going to be fine with either one. It really just means whether you want something, you know, coming from lower, putting lower pressure on it, or if you want higher pressure, because obviously the other one starts down here on this one and it puts pressure from down here. And then it, uh, is forced down from up here where it hits the belt line. Whereas this one puts pressure at the belt line from the belt line. So it, it's just really a matter of preference on me because uh, I do have my gut and everything. It's actually nice to kind of have the pressure go lower, uh, especially with that little um, uh, wedge on the back. It, it just sits a little bit better for a heavy set guy, at least for me being heavy set. Um, 
So, but it is what it is. And then from there, I mean, you're, that's pretty much all your options from there. I mean, you, you obviously have the option for suppressor height sights, which I did go for, um, all the optics cut options. And, uh, before you guys have to look, I'll just pop this up here. So obviously they have, uh, aim points, burst, crimson trace, hollow sun, low pull, shield, sig, blah, 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 blah. Try Trigicon vortex. They literally have everything. So, I mean, if you basically have a common sight that you want to use on your gun, they're going to have an option for it. And then obviously, um, uh, you can get a, uh, magazine carrier to go with it and you can do that. Uh, with a couple of different attachments and everything, I did not go with a magazine carrier because I just pocket carry mine. Um, I don't have a Neo Mag attachment right now. I gave it to a buddy of mine um, as a gift because he actually broke the magazine carrier that he was using at the time, and he had always wanted a Neo Mag, so I just gave him mine. Uh, and then obviously you can get thread locker. I don't know why that's on there, but and I'm not buying a holster right now, so it really doesn't matter why I'm doing that, but just for the sake of argument. So, but yeah, and then uh, you just go through the rest of the steps and add it to your cart. So pretty awesome, um, very happy with mine. Uh, can't say enough good things about them, especially with all those customization options. I really don't think that you can get too much better. Yes, you have uh, things like QVO Tactical, which I've had QVO Tactical. They have great holsters, no digs on QVO Tactical um, because they are a smaller production and these are Roger's words and I am on on Roger's Discord, so you know, don't try to hit me in the Discord because uh, to other people because I will see it and I will say something. Just watch the video. Um, uh, Roger has an amazing shop. They have an amazing amount of options, especially different options than what they offer you on uh, Legacy Firearms um, that no other shop that I've seen offers. But uh, they uh, are limited on what light bearing holsters that they do, as well as what. Uh, grip frames they do for the um, P320 and obviously they're updating as time goes on but uh, I don't believe even now they have one for this specific one they just have a P321 um, and then obviously they don't have one for a P320 Wilson Combat Carry 2 with this optic for light bearing like this and this is what I wanted this is what I built this is what I wanted and this works perfectly I couldn't get that from any other company, so that's why I went with Legacy Firearms, and I'm totally happy with it, so no problems there. Anyway, I'm going to cut this off because uh, we're already at 27 minutes, and I've rambled on way too long. Again, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I will be monitoring, and uh, if you want to see anything else or you uh, want me to do another video on anything, let me know. I do have some other guns, and I did do some other videos. I uh, will try and get back out to shoot this. When I uh, can get a buddy out with me so that, uh, you know, kind of just do a better shooting experience as well as I have a buddy that is a trainer. He's uh, starting up his own business. Uh, I think it's called Bax Tactical and I'll have more information on that when I actually get him on video. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try and get him out with me so that uh, we can go shoot. Uh, maybe he can video me a little bit taking some shots with it and I'll video him and uh, give you some more impressions. So anyway, thanks guys. You have a great rest of your night.